Good Samaritans. Um, I rang a couple of hours ago. Walter Bryce, I left my details on your answering machine. I thought you might have rung back. Ah, you've only just got in. Well, um, I left a message to say that my wife and I were going to kill ourselves. Um, no, no, we haven't. Well, that's fairly obvious, or I wouldn't be phoning, would I? No, 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 I'm not losing my temper. Yes, yes, I know it's a wonderful world, but you try telling my wife that. I'll phone you back later. Goodbye. Who was that, Walter? The hospital. Hospital? Yes, I thought I'd bring them uh, to see whether I could donate my organs. I mean, I'm not going to have much use for them after today. And which organs were you thinking of donating, Walter? Oh, the usual. Heart, liver, kidneys, that sort of thing. Do you think they'll be any good to them? After all, they've taken a fair amount of punishment these last few years, particularly the liver. And as for the heart, I thought it was going to pack up before lunch. Yes, well, I thought it might be worth a try. It'd be nice to think that some part of me was still getting around after I was dead and gone. Perhaps if we'd had children. Children? Yes, I've never mentioned this to you before, Celia, but did you know that I was the last of the Bryces? No, I didn't know that, Walter. Mm, sad to think that when I die, the name of Bryce will die with me. Well, I'm sure you'll find plenty in the phone book. Anyway, they won't accept your organs. They'll all be reserved for the autopsy. Well, it's just a thought. Where are you going? I think I'll take a walk around the garden. Well, don't be long. And take a coat. It looks like rain. We don't want you to catch a chill. I'm afraid Walter's delaying us again. He now has a sudden desire to breed. Well, Mr. Bryce seems too full of life force to be thinking about death. Yes. Don't you think you've punished him enough, Mrs. Bryce? Not yet. Are you a married man, Vincent? I was. Oh, what happened? Didn't work out. I got rid of her. You don't mean... Oh, no, 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 no. Divorce. Mind you, that would have been cheaper. Well, then, perhaps you can understand that my own marriage has been less than perfect. I stayed with Walter because he needed me desperately. He adores me, you know. I wouldn't depend on that, Mrs. Bryce. Oh, I don't. He depends on me. Life would hold nothing for Walter if I were to die. So, you see, it would be almost a kindness to take him with me. Are you sure? You don't think some new dimension might have come into his life recently? You don't know my husband. Mm, do you, Mrs. Bryce? Oh, I can't pretend I wasn't hurt when you told me that he had no intention of taking the poison. That's why I agreed to our little charade. I had to see if he'd go through with it. And in the end, he couldn't. You saw what happened. He tried to prevent it. With respect, Mrs. Bryce, he wasn't sure whether he got the right glass. What you saw was his instinct for self-preservation. Nonsense. He changed his mind. At the last moment, he couldn't face life without me. And you know why? Because he'd find it empty and drab. Empty and drab? Well, he's taking delivery of a new car next week. What? You'll find the details in his desk, Mrs. Bryce. Top right-hand drawer. I don't think he's getting it for the funeral. It's in terracotta red. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Walter loves cars. He always has one on order. And why is he so deep into holiday literature? What? Keep looking, Mrs. Bryce. He was planning a little visit to Montego Bay. Strange place to go for a period of mourning, wouldn't you agree? Well, that doesn't prove anything. Clearly, he intended to surprise me. He wouldn't have gone alone. We're inseparable. We go everywhere together. Everywhere except Cooper's Bottom. Cooper's Bottom? I don't understand. That's where they meet. Who? Mr. Bryce and his secretary. What are you talking about? They're having an affair, Mrs. Bryce. Having an affair? Don't be ridiculous. Angie's the daughter of one of my closest friends. What on earth makes you think they're having an affair? I sensed it the moment I entered this house. How dare you? How dare you sense things in my house? Walter isn't having an affair. And she's years younger than he is. Be that as it may, they have a way of looking at each other that convinces me this whole thing is an elaborate conspiracy to eliminate you. Eliminate me? No, if you don't mind, I think I'll leave before someone gets hurt. No! Call it off, Mrs. Bryce. Call it off? Do you think I'd want to leave if what you say is true? If I had reason to kill myself before, I have double the reason now. But I don't believe you. Walter loves me and he'd never let me go. He's proved it time and again. Do you know how much you're worth to him dead, Mrs. Bryce? Where are you going? My room. You won't do anything silly.
Walter, I thought you were dying. Well, could you give me the kiss of life? That hurt. I'm sorry, but I waited and waited, and you didn't come. And when I saw you stretched out there, I thought they'd made another dreadful mistake. There nearly was, Angie. Did she go through with it? Oh, yeah, she went through with it all right. It was a nightmare. Oh, never mind. It's all over now. Yes, yeah, certainly is. I couldn't go through that again. Where is she? In her room. Good. I'm glad she's not here. I want to remember her the way she was. What? Slim and beautiful, and she was beautiful in her own little way. Or perhaps more attractive than beautiful. Andy, yeah, I, think, I think there's something I should you tell you. You must try and remember the good things about her, Walter, and there were good things. Her kindness to animals. Remember the squirrel with the broken leg? She's not dead, Angie. You mean the cow didn't go through with it after all? No. You talked her out of it. I didn't. I swear I didn't. I thought I wouldn't have the nerve, but I did. Oh, there was a lot of tension in there, Angie, but I was impassive and, and I went through with it. But that raving lunatic hadn't put the poison in. Now she wants to do it all over again. Of course, that's, that's out of the question. Why is it out of the question? Oh, she's not going to die, Angie. No, it's just the people around her that begin to die. Yes, you're right. Yes, even the squirrel turned its toes up. Do you know, I, I remember the day it died. I thought from her face there was something wrong. She's got this expression for death. She said, Nutkin's gone. I thought, one day she's going to be looking down at me and saying, Walter's gone. No, she won't, Walter. Because we're going through with it. Oh, we can't. Vincent knows everything. He's demanding money. Then pay him. Hello? Mr. Bryce, he's lying down at the moment. No, he's not dead. Mrs. Bryce? No, she's not dead either. Yes, I know it's a wonderful world. Who are you? Samaritans? Mr. Bryce rang you. I see. He's very much alive at the moment. Goodbye. You rang the Samaritans. You never intended going through with it. It was all talk, just so I'd keep on seeing you. It wasn't all talk. I did go through with it. I just couldn't face it twice. You don't love me. You love her. That's not true. And you are the only one I love, I swear. I would have done it. I, I... Wait a minute. This gets better and better. Does it? Yes. I, I, I thought it might. Well, that was inspired, phoning the Samaritans, begging them for help. Well, who could accuse you of assisting her death? You were trying to prevent it. The coroner probably expresses sympathy. I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, Walter, you're a genius. <clears throat> oh, Celia, you two both spared, thank God. <clears throat> Angie, my dear, I've always found your concern so touching, and I'm glad you've come back. I wanted to see you before... Oh, you have little pieces of grass on you. Yes, I've been to Cooper's Bottom. Cooper's Bottom? Yes. Thinking, trying to decide what to do. Yes. Put that in a safe place, Walter. It's my new suicide note. Another one? Don't do it, Celia. Please, Angie, don't try to dissuade me. It's too late. Now you're both here, there's something I want to tell you. I've been selfish. Oh, I wouldn't no. say yes, that, Yes, I've been terribly selfish. I've taken too much for granted. I realise now this is one journey I must make alone. Would you be terribly upset, Walter, if I asked you to live? To terribly upset? Um, well, I... Um... Don't do it, Celia. Please, Angie, let Celia finish. It's simply that I feel you're only going through with this because you love me, and that would be wrong. Yeah, well, I can see there's no hiding things from you, Celia. Uh, pa perhaps it would be wrong. I hadn't thought of it like that. The point is, Walter, do you mind? No, I don't mind. I, I mean, of course I mind. I, I mind dreadfully. <laughs> what would life be like without you, Celia? Miserable, dreary, and unhappy. But if you've made up your mind, there's uh, nothing more I can say. I'll listen to anything you have to say, Walter. No, no, no. It's your life, Celia, and who's to say you're not right? I mean, why wait for the four horsemen of the apocalypse to come thundering down upon us when we all know they're round the corner? War, pestilence, famine, and, um, uh, what's the other one? Death. Right. Death. Uh, well, I, I, I almost envy you. Mm. Yes, I must say you make the prospect seem quite attractive. But, Walter, what will you do without me? How will you spend the rest of your life? Life? What life? It won't be a life, just an existence. And what about you, Angie? What? You haven't said don't do it for some time. Well, I can see there's no point in arguing with you, Celia. Oh, I don't mind an argument, Angie. No, you've got that look in your eyes. A far away look, a 
spiritual, almost ethereal quality as if you're already out of reach. Well, I'm not quite out of reach, not yet. And if you beg me not to do it even now, Walter... No, 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 that wouldn't be right. It wouldn't? No, I must stop thinking of myself for a change. Of course I shall miss you dreadfully. Don't mourn for me, Walter. I don't want that. I don't want you to be unhappy. Why don't you buy a new car, take a holiday? What? Go abroad. Spain, Greece, West Indies. West Indies? Don't let him mope, Angie. Make him forget me. Oh, we could never forget you, could we, Angie? No. We should think of you as you always were, a, a wonderful person. Very rare person. Someone who has enriched our lives. Oh, hardly enriched. I'm leaving most of my money to charity. What? Well, that just goes to show what a wonderful person you are, Celia. What nice things you're saying about me. It's almost as if I'm dead already. Well, it shouldn't take long. I suppose the bottle's in the bag. Do you mean the whole estate, Celia? I wonder if it's locked. No, it's not locked. How careless of him. One drink from this and I'll be gone. That's right, Celia. One drink from that and it'll all be over. Sorry. Wrong number. I'm going to drink from this bottle and then I'm going to die. Nothing more certain. What about the house, Celia? I'm going to kill myself. Is that all right with you? Perfectly. We won't stand in your way. I can see no one's going to stand in my way. Don't do it, Mrs. Bryce. I'd like to point out this is not a game you're playing. That is a deadly poison. This is not play acting. I've never play acted, Vincent. I may have rehearsed for this moment for most of my life, but it was never play acting. Please, Mrs. Bryce, think again. But Vincent, how can I keep you waiting any longer? You must get to Slough. Oh, never mind Slough. Don't you see? You're doing it for the wrong reason. Celia! Yes, Walter? Nothing. Nothing? Then goodbye, darling. I'm glad of one thing. That we made love last night. What? Um. She drank it. She's done it. At last. Is she... Is she here? Uh... Dead? Don't be frightened to use the word, Mr. Bryce. Yes, yeah, she's dead. She was dead before she hit the ground. But I thought you said there'd be time to walk around and have a chat. Well, I didn't know she was going to drink it from the bottle, did I? We usually dilute it. She's had enough to kill a regiment. I was wrong about her. I never thought she'd do it. Neither did I. Is that it, then? Is that it? You sound disappointed. Well, it's just I don't feel any different. Well, you're not supposed to feel any different. It's Mrs. Bryce who's feeling different. She's feeling anything at all. I'm calmer than I thought I'd be. You're not as calm as she is. She's smiling. What did I tell you? Absolute satisfaction. You're right. She is smiling. Yes. Almost as if she's having the last laugh on all of us. As if she knows something already we don't. Oh, do you think we can cover her up? Well, I knew you'd want to cover her up. What is this taboo about death? When I was young, we had them in the front parlour for days. Everyone in the street came to have a look. And those who couldn't get in looked through the window. I'll get something to cover her up. Well, that concludes our little transaction, Mr Bryce. And don't forget to leave the suicide note in a prominent position. Oh, yes, yes, the suicide note. Now, where did I put it? Ah, here we are. Oh, word of warning. Word of warning? Do nothing with indecent haste. You know, marriage, holidays, babies. Take care. And try and squeeze a few tears out at the inquest. I won't have to squeeze a few tears out. She was my wife. Yes, of course. I found a tablecloth. It's only plastic, I'm afraid. Oh, she's not going to mind. Right, well, I'll be off, Mr. Bryce. If I've given satisfaction, I hope you recommend me to your friends. You're not leaving? Yes. Nothing more for me to do here now, unless you want to join her. No, she's dead and gone to glory. Gone but not forgotten. Mourned by a dear friend and a grieving husband. A rose has gone over the wall and blossomed on the other side. The sun has gone from our lives. Take what comfort you can from those words. No extra charge. Oh, that reminds me. The check. The check? I destroyed it. Oh, thank you. Write out another one. Uh, let me see. It was for uh, ten thousand pounds. You said five. I said it was flexible. Mm. And don't feel the stubbing. And don't worry. I won't cash it till after the inquest. 
Right, now you've got a lot to do. Phone calls to make, doctors, solicitors, police. It's a busy time for the bereaved. I won't get in your way. That's the doctor. I don't think I've got his number. It's in the diary. Oh, yes. And the solicitor, have we got his home address? I've got it. Do we have to leave her here? What? Well, she doesn't look very comfortable and, well, quite frankly, she's in the way. Well, what do you suggest? What about the bedroom? What, with those stairs and my hernia? She's a dead weight, Mr. Bryce. No pun intended. They wouldn't thank you for putting her in the bedroom. I mean, getting a coffin down those stairs would be the devil's own job. No, this is, this is ideal. Straight out through the conservatory, no problem. Well, look, we've got a lot to do here. Oh, that's an idea. Yes, take her out through the conservatory and put her on the sun lounger. Sun lounger? Is that dignified, Mr. Bryce? Well, we can cover her up with a cloth. I suppose it rains. It's plastic. Oh, all right. Well, give us a hand. Right, from me to you. Oh, I didn't think she'd be this heavy. Is he all right? Yes, miss. But keep an eye on him. He'll probably start to twitch in a minute. They usually do. I've got to get the slough. It looks like rain. Could I borrow an umbrella? Of course, I'll get one from the hall. Oh, thank you. It's been nice doing business with you, miss. Has he gone? Yes. I need a drink. Not now, Walter. That's all right for you. You were born with two whiskies inside you. I wasn't. It'll calm my nerves. Kiss me, Walter. What? Kiss me. What's the matter? I'm afraid. Oh, now, wait a minute. You can't be. I'm the one who's supposed to be afraid. After all, the whole thing was your idea. Yes, but I never thought she'd do it. Angie, if you never thought she'd do it, what have we been breaking our necks for? Don't you understand? If she hadn't done it, you might have finally seen through her. She did do it. Yes. Did you think she'd do it? Yes. And you stood by? I didn't stand by. You kicked my ankle. And if we're talking about guilt, who was it phoned Exodus in the first place? Well, if you've been prepared to leave her... I couldn't leave her. You couldn't leave the money. Well, I haven't noticed you turning your nose up at it. I mean, what do you think's taking us to Montego Bay? Not that there's going to be much money left now. She's probably left it to the cat's home. I'll have to stop that check. Walter, you're shouting. What? Well, we're quarrelling already. That's what she'd want. You're right. She's exercising her power even now. Oh, God, I can't stay here tonight. Come to me. No, it'll arouse suspicion. Why? Mr. Bryce is under sedation and staying with friends. Vincent said we must do nothing with indecent haste. Of course, if you don't want to come. Well, of course I want to come. Are you angry about something? Why did you make love to her last night? I didn't. Why'd she say you did? I don't know. I suppose she was trying to spoil things between us. Well, why would she do that? Unless... Unless she knew. She knew? She must have known all along. The suicide note. My God. It's not a suicide note. Listen to this. To whom it may concern, for some weeks now, I've had this terrible fear my husband's trying to poison me. This is since I discovered he's having an affair with his secretary. I've been violently ill on several occasions. What? And now try to eat as little as possible. Pray God I'm wrong. Only time will tell. Destroy it. P.S. If this note has been destroyed, you'll find a copy with my solicitor to be opened in the event of my death. That bitch! No wonder she was happy to go. She's done for us. Keep calm, Walter. Keep calm? I'm hanging on by my cuticles, and you tell me to keep calm? Oh, we deny everything. She was a neurotic woman. No one will believe oh, her. Oh, don't you depend on it. I'd better phone the police. Before you ring the police, I think there's something we should do. What's that, Angie? Make love. What was that, Angie? Make love. What now? Yes. 
Here? Yes. Don't you think that would come under the heading of indecent haste? I think we should make love. If we haven't got our love left, then all this has been for nothing. We must reaffirm our feelings for each yes, other. Yes, Angie, Angie, I'd like to reaffirm our feelings for each other, but under the circumstances, do you think it's going to be terribly successful? So she is going to spoil it for us, even from the grave. Well, that's just it. She's not in the grave. She's hardly cold. Well, I think we should do it. Now, the sooner the better. After all, we don't know what's going to happen when the police arrive. Well, it's just that the drinks made me a little woozy. No, it's not that, Walter. She's made you feel guilty all your life. We must exorcise her ghost. Don't say ghost, Angie. Ha uh ha! -huh. What's the matter? Oh, it's her photograph staring at me. And tomorrow we'll get rid of all her clothes. Oh, Walter! What's the matter now, Walter? Not much room on the settee, Angie. All right. The floor. The floor. Isn't this where she fell, Angie? Yes. Yes, I thought so. Oh, no. What? Uh, it's raining. Oh, never mind, Walter. You do love me, don't you? Yes. Well, then. Celia? <laughs> oh, are you leaving? Yes, Mrs. Bryce, and thank you for your hospitality. The sliced ham was delicious. It was nothing. And I'm the one who should thank you, Vincent. After all, you saved my life. Uh, yes, I'd be grateful if you didn't mention that to anyone. I don't want to get a bad name in the business. Of course, I understand. How's Mr. Bryce? Well, he seems to have stopped twitching. I'm just going to take him a hot water bottle. What about the young lady? No, I think he'll have to make do with a hot water bottle from now on. No, I meant, has she left? Yes, and she'll never enter this house again. I trusted her and she betrayed me with a kiss. How could Walter have done this to me? It's not as if I've ever been unfaithful to him. You so, so I understand. And I, I've been thinking. And um, if you wanted to even the score, I think I know the answer. Oh, what's that? Have an affair, Mrs. Bryce. An affair? Oh, no. Just a brief whirl. Think of the sweet revenge, the poetic justice. No, I don't know. Fleeting moment of infidelity. Pay him back in his own coin. But, Vincent, even if I found the idea of infidelity attractive, I... I simply don't move in those circles. No, I, I realise that, but all I'm saying is, if the idea appeals, I'm at your disposal. You? Yes. Is that part of the service, Vincent? No, no, no. No, this is personal. After all, Mrs. Bryce, you've got nothing to lose now. Do you want to die wondering? Wondering? Wondering what infidelity would have been like? Wondering what I would have been like? I think I prefer to wonder, Vincent. Uh, anyway, you're wrong. I, I do have something to lose. I have something to live for now. I have to protect Walter from that woman. He needs me. He doesn't need you, Mrs. Bryce. Do you know what you're worth to him dead now? Yes, I know. Ten thousand pounds. The price is rising. Look at that. The writing's legible, the hand firm. Is that the hand of a man who'd be lost without you? Do you mind if I keep this, Vincent? No, I don't want it. He thought he could buy me. He thought because of my humble origins, I had my price. He was wrong. I'll make out a cheque for something more reasonable. Uh, Mrs. Bryce. Well, where are you we... going? I'm leaving. Don't be ridiculous. I'll, uh, I'll wait outside, Mrs. Bryce. I think you ought to go and rest, Walter. You look terrible. I'm leaving you, Celia. Because of that girl? I happen to love her. And I love you, Walter, till death and beyond, twice. Yes, I know. And uh, I'm sorry. You're sorry? Mm. I've often wondered what it would be like to be dead and be able to look down and see what people thought of me. 
Well, now I've had that experience and it wasn't very pleasant. I was shunted out onto the terrace and covered with a plastic tablecloth and left in the pouring rain. And when I finally made my return, I found my photograph face downwards and you were tempting Congress on the very spot where I fell. I don't think it was the exact spot. It was like dancing on my grave, Walter. It was certainly out of sight, out of mind, where you were concerned. How could I have been so blind? When did all this happen? While you were at your spiritualist meetings. My God! I was concerned with the dead when I should have been watching the living. Yes, well, it's too late now. Vincent was right. The bolts are on the inside. There's nothing to keep me here. Now, how do you intend to live? Oh, I shall go back to teaching. Teaching? They won't have you. They don't give jobs to poisoners. I'm not a poisoner. Not yet, but when they read my note to the solicitors. You wouldn't. Try me, Walter. And if that doesn't clinch it, what about the check? Check? You've certainly been busy with a jolly old check book, haven't you, Walter? 10,000 seems to be the going rate at the moment. It wouldn't work. Well, if you can spot any flaws in it, perhaps you'll point them out. Yes, I can spot a flaw. And a big one. What's that? You'd have to kill yourself first. And I will. <laughs> what was that, Walter? Nothing. Did you snort? No. Vincent? Vincent, I want you to give me the poison immediately. Oh, not again, Mrs. Bryce. This is getting monotonous. Yes, well, things are going to liven up now, Vincent. For everybody except Celia, that is. I thought we settled all this. Everything's changed. Walter's leaving me. I wish you'd make your mind up, Mrs. Bryce. First you can't live with him, and now you can't live without him. The bottle, Vincent. Is it, uh, is it in the bag? No. I'm keeping it on my person as a precaution. The bottle that Mrs. Bryce took from the bag was, was the, the placebo. placebo. Yes, I know. I, I suppose I'll need something to take it with. Yes, well, what would you like, uh, Celia? Uh, dry sherry? The Amontillado's very good. I'll join you. Thank you, Walter. There we are. Well, Vincent? You sure, Mrs. Bryce? You don't have to do it now. No, of course you don't. If Vincent stays much longer, he'll talk you to death. Do you really think he's worth dying for, Mrs. Bryce? She's not going to die, Vincent. You're wasting your time. She's a born survivor. Walter! I'm not going to be blackmailed, Celia. Ah, there's Angie. Oh, she's waiting for me. I must go. No, wait! I can't. You're right, Walter. What? I was wrong to threaten you. Tear up the cheque and the note. I lied. There isn't another copy. Do you mean that? Yes. And, and you won't do anything silly? No, nothing silly. What I'm going to do now is very sensible. I'm going to remove the one obstacle to your happiness. I'm going to give you your freedom, Walter. But No, that... for once I'm calm and rational. I know it's the right thing to do. I've made my decision. I feel at peace. Then I won't stay. Normally I enjoy my work, but I'm not proud of my part in this. I seem to have lost my zest for it somehow. I don't know why. I'll come back later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Vincent, will you ask Angie to come in for a moment? Certainly. Angie? Why not, Walter? Let's have one last drink together as friends. What do you want to say to her, Celia? Don't worry, I'm not angry anymore. It's too late for that. Pour her a drink, Walter. You sure you're not angry? Of course not. I'm not bitter anymore. She is won and I've lost. I just wanted to know that. I don't... Reproach her for what happened. She couldn't help her emotions, Walter. Is she coming? Yes, I, I think so. Oh, good. Well, what is it? Don't look so stern, Angie. I thought we could have one last drink together. One for the road, Angie. You mean? Yes. You're looking at a lonely, defeated woman. There's nothing left for me now. Pass Angie her glass, Walter. Careful, don't spill it. Now, what should we drink to? You don't have to go through with this, Celia. Oh, don't stop her, Walter. If you can't face up to this moment now, you'll never be free of her. Angie, I have faced up to this moment twice. She's still here. My nerve won't take any more. Don't weaken now. She's right. Listen to her, Walter. So young, so strong, so diamond hard. She'll be good for you. I was always too weak. Now, what should we drink to? I know. The second Mrs. Bryce. Bottoms up, Angie. No. No? No, don't drink to me, Celia. Be too hypocritical. Then let's drink to death. To death, everyone. D no. No? No, not, not, not to death. Then let's drink to life. To your life together, you and Angie. 
Who knows what the future holds? Your life may be long and happy, it may be tragically short, but whatever happens, I hope you'll never regret the way you wounded me with your cruel deception. Now, don't put your glass down, Angie, you'll mark the surface. To your life together. No. Oh, she won't do it, Walter. Will someone give me the chance, for God's sake? Are we going to drink or not? Yes. I'll give you a toast, Celia. To love. To love. Bye, Angie. No, don't, don't do it. I, I, I'll stay. What? Walter! Walter, are you sure? Oh, you fool! Don't you see? She wouldn't have done it! I'm sorry, I couldn't take the chance. Now, let's all put our drinks down and talk about this. I couldn't stand by and see her destroy herself. I've hurt her enough. Well, you don't want to hurt her, but you don't care how you hurt me! Now, give me your drink, Angie, before you spill all it. All these promises, all those lies, I bet you've been humping her all along. Humping? What does she mean, Walter? I just couldn't face another suicide attempt. It's been a long day. And you'll gasp. You don't know what love is, either of you. Well, I'll show you. If she won't drink it, I will. Angie! I... Oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Angie, my poor darling, uh, keep still. Put your fingers down your throat. I I I'll call for a doctor. Uh, an ambulance. I'll dial 999. Don't fuss. Don't fuss. Angie's just poisoned herself. No, she hasn't. What do you mean? Well, she doesn't look poisoned to me. How do you feel, Angie? I don't feel poisoned. But I saw him put it in the glass. Well, perhaps she's just slightly poisoned. No, I feel fine. What? For what resistance? It would probably have killed an older but woman. I saw him put it in the glass. I never took my eyes off it. Except when I turned to the window. What are you staring at? Celia, if it wasn't in this glass, where is it? Celia, since I took your drink, perhaps you'd care to take mine. No. You tried to kill me! You switched the glasses. She, she's no good for you, Walter. I had to protect you. She's too young. Yes, and if it had been left to you, I wouldn't have got any older. Are you coming, Walter? Goodbye, Celia. Walter, if you go, I shall take this drink. I swear. See, I'm taking it. Say something, Walter. Cheers, Celia. Oh, you did give me a turn, Mrs. Bryce. You did keep bouncing back. What resilience. Don't mock me, Vincent. I'm not mocking you. I'm astonished. Mr. Bryce is quite right. You are indestructible. I didn't take it. Well, I gathered that. But I shall. Of course. Probably tomorrow. Why not? I understand the weather's going to be abysmal tomorrow. I just didn't feel like it. I don't always feel like it. You're not ready yet. Anyone can see that. But I will be. After all, there's nothing to keep me here now Walter's gone. I shall be very lonely. No need to be. I know plenty of men who give their right arm to shack up here. I beg your pardon? Look out there, Mrs. Bryce. Look at them daffodils and the other ones, not quite so yellow. Nasty side. And their picture. And the violets and the primroses. And them bluebell things. The hyacinths. And the yellow bushes of Forsyth. Yeah. I know the word, Mrs. Bryce. What I'm saying is you've got a lovely spot here. You should see it in high summer. Oh, I'd love to. The walls are draped with wisteria and clematis. The whole house is filled with the scent of flowers. The scent of flowers. 
All I get is fried rice, even on Sundays. I can imagine Sundays here, Mrs. Bryce. Roast beef cooking in the kitchen, sound of church bells from the village. None of that interminable oriental chatter. Day when the kitchen smells of the garden and the garden smells of roast beef and gravy. Man could be very comfortable here on a Sunday morning. Take a slim volume from the bookshelf, ice cold drink, sit out on the terrace, listening to the bird song. Is there a bird song, Mrs. Bryce? Oh, yes. And soon there'll be the sound of the cuckoo across the meadows. Not that I shall be here to listen to it. Why not, Mrs. Bryce? What? I've just had an idea. Why not wait for the first cuckoo and then do it? Do what? Kill yourself. Give you time to think about it, make proper preparations. What a good idea. Mm. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll wait until I hear the first cuckoo and then I'll kill myself. I'm glad that's settled. I feel better already. Well, I must take my leave. Oh, I'm going. I must get the slough. Of course, I'd forgotten. That means I'll be all alone here. Not necessarily. Come with me. You mean to slough? Well, why not? But won't I be in the way? No, you'll be an asset. Oh, I must warn you, though, he could be in a bit of a state. He could be prostrate with despair. Yes, I suppose the scene could be harrowing. Harrowing is our little word, Mrs. Bryce. I'll get my coat. Suppose he's changed his mind. Well, I'm sure we can change it back for him. Here's the slough, Mrs. Bryce. The slough. And after. <laughs> Hello? What? Samaritans? Sod off. Lady Vincent? Yes. Oh, my leg must have gone to sleep. Well, you must be tired. I'll bring the car around to the front. It's a lovely evening for a drive. Look at that sky. I think you're wrong about tomorrow. A red sky at night, Shepherd's delight, you know, Vincent. Mrs. Bryce? When you said you didn't take the drink, where did you put it? I suppose it was the rubber plant again. No, I put it down somewhere. But the empty glass? No, that was Angie's. Oh. Do you, do you remember exactly where you put it? I'm not sure somewhere about it. When I do, I, I was going to wear black and then I thought, why be gloomy? Somewhere about. Dare I hope it's the one on the mantelpiece? What? No, that was Walter's. That was Walter's. That was Angie's. I put my drink on the coffee table. Oh, I remember. I left it on the coffee table. Coffee table. Is something the matter? I suddenly feel terribly tired. Almost leaden. It's been a long day. You must have been up terribly early. I'll drive. You rest in the back. You know, I feel quite excited. I feel a sense of optimism. I feel filled with a new vitality. Vincent, is something wrong? Why are you lying on the carpet? I'm so fatigued. Mrs. Bryce. Listen to your voice. Your hands, they're cold. Oh, my God. What is it? I can smell fried rice. <laughs> um. Vincent? Vincent? 